Revolutions is about uh, the Irish roller derby team. We started shooting in uh, 2011 and we started with the first ever Irish roller derby team and the first ever World Cup. So the team was uh, getting ready to go and perform kind of on the world stage and compete against uh, countries all over the world that had been playing for a lot longer than they had been. Uh, so we tracked the team over four years but we also delved into the characters' lives uh, who are in the film, both the, the Irish team is made up of Cork and Dublin skaters. So we followed two coaches and uh, over the f four years, both the ups and downs of their sporting lives and also their just normal everyday lives. It was tw 2011, so it was smack bang kind of in the middle of the recession. Um, so that had a huge impact on them and one of the girls says in the film roller derby was like a coping mechanism for the unemployed and uh, there was an awful lot of kind of like uh, kind of negative feeling in the country at that time and uh, roller derby felt like it was the thing that was trying to keep people here like people were emigrate like out of my friends everyone's friends you know who were in their 20s and 30s they were just like disappearing off to Australia or Canada or New Zealand um, and uh, this was something where people could go and feel part of something that was growing rather than something that was dwindling. Uh, I, I came across Dublin Roller Derby on Facebook after I'd seen Whip It, the film with Drew Barrymore and Ellen Page. And actually that film started Roller Derby in Ireland. Uh, Kitty, who's the captain of the Dublin team, she saw the film and rang her mate and said, here, will we, will we try and do this here? And so they did, and that's kind of how it started, and that's how it continued. It was all like, here, do you want to do this? Oh yeah, get gang over here. You know, really DIY, really grassroots, really just, uh, just people organising together and making something together. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's where I came across it, and I just thought, oh, that's a really cool looking sport. But when I heard that an Irish team was going to be formed and they were going to go to compete against like the USA and Canada and England and Germany and Spain and, and Japan, I was like, oh wow, there's something, like this is a story, there's something about to happen and I want to be there, I want to see what happens, I want to capture that. And that was the start, I suppose, of what became a story about women in their 20s in Ireland in a recession who were playing this exciting sport. No, I thought it was going to actually take more like six to nine months. Um, we were going to go from the first World Cup in December to the European Cup in July. Uh, but that was, it's such a new sport, like things like get announced and then they're kind of half announced and then they're cancelled and then, so now it's much more organised. Uh, but so that European Cup was cancelled and we were like, oh, I think somebody was like, there might be a World Cup in next December, not December, no. So uh, there was a moment where we were like, we realised the World Cup was going to be in 2014 and we thought, myself and Ross Whitaker, the producer, we sat down and we just knew that aside from the competitions and the, the, uh, the World Cup, there was a story here that deserved like just more attention and uh, I was happy to continue following the girls just to see how they were going to work through this really tricky period in kind of Irish society and Irish life and like you know um, jobs were just so scarce some people were working like three hours a week like getting paid for three hours a week but Crow was like getting up in the morning going what do I do today? How do I make some money today? And she was making fibre here and fibre there and it was just like, just felt very like important. I have not been doing roller derby myself, no. Uh, I would love to say that I had and I wish I had now because people keep asking me and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm really good at it, hang on till I just do a twirl. No, uh, I haven't done it. And the really boring answer is that I was afraid, like, if I fell, right, and whatever broke my wrist or hurt my wrist, I wouldn't be able to shoot it. Sounds like a bit of an excuse, doesn't it? There were so many times where I thought, you're finished, it's done. And it just wasn't. It was never, <laughs> it was like, when I finished the film, I thought, oh my God, I finally finished the film. And then it was like such a big, push to actually get it to have a release and then 
like trying to get people to come to it has been such a big job as well so it's like it's never ending so um, that's not really a lesson but that's something that I will certainly bring forward is like even though it was a marathon uh, it's probably more like two marathons uh, you know in terms of what my expectations of how long it would take and um, so there's that but there's also um, trust is a big thing so in terms of I think the most important thing that I've learned is that like the relationship between me the filmmaker and the characters is like just the most important thing the filmmaker that got me interested in make or made me feel like I might be able to make um, documentaries was Nick Broomfield. Um, I've never actually met him but I would have studied, I went to the um, University in Liverpool and I would have studied a lot of his films. The first film he made was a short in, in Liverpool actually. I think that kind of got me into it and then I watched all of his films and you could just really see him making the film in the film and that taught me a lot about how I should go about trying to make a film. Um, and his documentary is on here at the moment as well, actually. So uh, that was that was kind of funny. That was cool. Um, so yeah, he would have been my first big influence for sure. What I've been hearing from a lot of women, certainly in their twenties and thirties, is that they just don't see themselves on the screen, and that this has just rang true with them, and they were sitting on the edge of their seat watching it and that to me feels like I've done like I've done a good job I've done what I set out to do like to tell this particular story like give these particular people a voice not speak for them let them speak like you know speaking for themselves in the film and I feel like it's it's just something it's a voice that you don't really see on TV not to mention in the cinema that often so if you're if you love if you love women and if you like feel like you're lacking in hearing your own voice back to you on the screen well then go and see it you'll enjoy it <laughs>